Access Sacramento presents Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week, and a partner in our community. Folsom Lake Honda. is setting on another fall football Friday here and Access Sacramento has it loaded and ready for you for the hometown sports game of the week tonight from Wolverine Stadium on the campus of Rosemont High School the Kennedy Cougars come in to visit they come calling to the Rosemont Wolverines good evening and welcome to our telecast tonight. Here we are at Rosemont High School along with the Imperator of Analysis, Hall of Famer Jim Domino. I'm Will James, we welcome you aboard. And tonight we have a rather interesting matchup for you. A team that is yet to get into the win column but has plenty to offer, the Kennedy Cougars against a ball club that so far is unscathed in four starts. Jim, as we know, Coach Lewis has finally got his ball club in readiness in terms of basically injury free and he's ready to compete fully now with his entire roster. Well he is, getting some players off that injured list certainly helps and having a bye in the week previous to this football game and kind of recover and so forth and uh, that's a big thing. You know, don't be deceived by his 0-3 record. He's played some very strong opponents and he comes in here, in here tonight with a very even chance to win here, even though he's on the road, Will. And of course, for Rick Wanlin, the veteran head coach here of the Rosemont Wolverines, as I mentioned, the unblemished 4-0 mark, but over a 10-year span, seven seasons in the win column for the veteran coach. Well, he has been very successful here as a football coach, a great mentor, and you'll hear more about that later. And he also, by the way, is an outstanding wrestling coach that's won two sectional titles. Not only that, deemed and honored as a model coach, and we'll expand on that a little bit later in the telecast. But the last time these two teams met, it put in reversal a trend that had been definitely in Rosemont's favor. However, last year, as we see in a ball game over at Kennedy, the Cougars came out tough and stayed that way. They certainly did. Uh, Rosemont started early with a 6-0 lead and Cougars responded with 28 unanswered points. Then the Wolverines rally again to tie the ball game up at 28 all in the fourth quarter. But however, the Cougars once again answered the call with a winning touchdown and a two-point conversion there at the end, winning this football game 36 28. Which adds further spice to this evening's matchup. I'm sure that none of the Rosemont contingent has forgotten that game and Kennedy hoping to continue that as an example of success. Now the last outings for these two squads wound up in uh, opposite categories. Kennedy uh, continuing uh, to rest up and recover in their bye week. A big help there but for Rick Wanlin's outfit, more of the same from the previous three weeks. Well, once again, uh, they came out over Cordova, handling them quite easily. They 4-0 with a road route and in Cordova. Big second half, breaks up a close game. Masterson uh, had a tremendous game, number 12. Watch him tonight with three TD passes. 
and the Wolverines rushed for 198 yards amongst all their backs. So they dominated that ball game other than early in the game. And they have dominated in that fashion in their three victories played on the field. Now, impact players always pertinent, and we'll take a look at the impact players for tonight's ball game. The crafty Cougars have to be extra crafty tonight on the road. Well, Kaiwan Cook is off the injured reserve list, and he's going to play tonight, slated to start, and outstanding running back and defensive back. Big Cameron Brown anchors that defensive line. He may fill in a little bit as a fullback, and he's a tank. Dante Adams starting two, two ways, tight end, defensive line, and then Tay Taylor, one of the best in the league, anchoring both offensive and defensive lines. As a junior, well, that is the way it's shaking out right now for tonight's hometown sports game of the week on Access Sacramento. Don't wander off because we're gonna look at the Wiley Wolverines and they bring plenty. Let's start with that outstanding wide receiver, two-way player, DeMarco Brodnax, and you're gonna see him tonight. He is averaging over 20 yards per catch. Zion Gideon, outstanding running back tonight. Logan Angeles anchoring that defensive line, senior Logan, and Elijah Tyone starting at tight end and linebacker, outstanding junior linebacker and tight end. Key players for the Wolverines. Well, we've got the table set for you. When we return from this short break, we'll join our pal Lauren Goodman. She has more on tonight's big matchup. Stay with us. We'll be right back. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Selfie. Nailed it. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented. That's right, half. Nearly 50%, mostly by making small everyday changes in your diet and controlling your weight, walking more, eating less, and eating foods that help you and your family to seriously reduce the risk of cancer. And of course, by not smoking. Visit the Cancer Prevention Together We Can website and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, stats, and more about protecting your family. Go to prevent50.org. Welcome back to the big show, Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. We're here at Rosemont High School where the Wolverines soon will be taking issue with the visiting Kennedy Cougars. Now let's bounce our attention down to field level and join our buddy, Lauren Goodman. Goody? Well, Will, this week I got an opportunity to meet two coaches, two different styles. For the visiting Cougars, we have Brian Lewis. He's coming into his third year, and he's trying to implement some culture changes as well as discipline. After an 0-3 start, he finished 5-5 five five last season, and he was deprived of the playoffs, but he is very focused on his team and still seeking that first playoff berth. Now, for the home team, they are led by Rick Wanlin. He's coming into his 10th year, and he has posted a seven out of the 10 seasons have been winning. In 2013, he had his best season where he went eight and four and also took the Metro League Championship. He has an overall playoff record of three and seven. Now these two teams are very familiar with each other once being opponents in the same conference. With the conference change, this is coming into tonight's 12th matchup between the two teams. Kennedy broke out two victories in the first game and in the last meeting 
But Rosemont has owned a seven-game winning streak starting back since 2007. Rosemont leads this series 8-3. to three. Will. Well, thank you very much, Lauren. Yes, the series is lopsided in favor of Rosemont right now tonight. Kennedy's going to try to do something about that by balancing the ledger one notch better this evening in a ball game that they would have to be considered underdogs based on the respective one loss records and the home field advantage in favor of Rosemont. Now, there's always big keys and important matchups in every game. And tonight is no exception. Well, let's start out with the MPT, mistakes, penalties, and turnovers. And that can, uh, that can turn a ball game around at any time. And uh, of course, both, both gloves want to avoid those three. A battle in the trenches, yes. Winning up front, very often put by coaches. Who's going to win that battle up front? And then we're going to have those O-lines and D-lines and vice versa clash in here. First-hand scoring, in particular, Kennedy has fallen behind early in their previous ball games in their three losses. It's very important that they put some points on the board and show the confidence to their team so that they can stay in this game. So that first-half scoring, extremely important. Well, imperative, as a matter of fact, essential. Now, the matchups, as we break those down for you, Jim has taken a look at uh, several of the matchups, and he figures these are the most critical. Well, as we look at the Rosemont offense against that Kennedy defense, Rosemont mixes it up with that, uh, you know, with that two-back offense offset backs and then mixes up with that spread. Kennedy is going to come at you more with a wing T type of thing. So, our offense for that Kennedy D, and Rosemont's been putting a lot of points on the board, averaging over 40. The Wolverines wide receivers, and they got a core of good wide receivers led by DeMarco Broadnax with over 300 yards of receptions early in the season. Darian Gooding is outstanding. And, of course, tight end Elijah Taoni is going to put a lot of stress on that secondary, on the Cougar secondary, definitely. As we look at their records, again, throw records out the window. And uh, let me tell you this, that if you look at the Rosemont opponents, they're 1-12. Yes, they're 4-0. And, oh. and Kennedy opponents are 6-5. and five. They've having played Pleasant Grove, Wood Creek, and Sheldon. Three pretty good football teams. So do not be deceived by that 0-3 oh Kennedy record. Well, numbers and records can be deceiving. As uh, we're getting closer to game time, our game officials are out on the field. Uh, they having the coin toss and so forth. And uh, the NCOA has assigned five veteran officials to monitor this game and make certain that it is fair and square. Referee Chris Gunnup will lead this quintet and Austin Otto is the game umpire. Our head linesman this evening, the veteran Andrea Barber. Line judge tonight, Sundiata Bahab, and our back judge, Mark Dominique Tate. We'll be right back for tonight's opening kickoff of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home.
the Rosemont High Marching Band distinctly providing their rendition of our Star Spangled Banner. An excellent crowd on hand this evening for host Rosemont and the meager turnout for Kennedy is now developing into a noticeable region of support. Right now at game time, 79 degrees, not even a whisper of a breeze across the stadium floor, but that could change later. Rosemont will receive from the Kennedy kickoff, and we are near game time. And we should indicate that, um, unfortunately, a little um, problem with our stadium scoreboard indicating uh, basically the central area would be the clock factor. So we may not have a timing device that can give specific second-by-second second timing, but naturally we'll do our best for you. So Kennedy out to kick off and start the ball game wearing their road whites, trimmed in some deep green, forest green, and the host Wolverines of Rosemont High in their navy blue and white headgear. Set to do the kicking, Elijah Weltman to do the booting, and twin returners deployed deep. Among them, Tahan and Brodnax, and don't forget about Darion Gooding, who can also motor. A short kickoff, it's fallen on and downed, and it's gonna be just average field position upcoming after the recovery and the down by Ian Marlang. So the Wolverine offense, Kyle Masterson, veteran quarterback at the helm, and he's gonna work with backs Zion Gedeon and Nick Lopez, dangerous wide receiver DeMarco Brodnex, Gooding as well, and the tight end Tayon. We'll set that interior line for you in a moment as we're ready for the first play from scrimmage as the Wolverines open first and 10 from the 22. Turn and give off the left side, a little burst and a nice double team tackle on the carry that time by Gideon. They're gonna give him a couple of three there. Peterson, McCowan, Guerrero, Angeles, and Tobias Scott on that interior front. And they've been doing a whale of a job this season blocking for Gideon and Nick Lopez who have put up some very nice rushing numbers. Call it second and eight after the two yard pickup as the Wolverines work from the 24 yard line, double wide to the right and Masterson unloads. And here's a turnaround catch, Brodnax in the open field and he works himself to the sideline but may have <laughs> yeah, he's got the, using those hands, I believe we're going to have an offensive uh, interference call. Boy, I tell you what, he hit, he throws that fade pretty good. Here's the call upcoming from Chris Gannup. Okay, well. Wow. Right off the get-go, second down. He didn't waste any time going to the deep fade. Actually, he was underthrown. He came back and made a nice catch. Broadnucks is a big receiver. So from the 37-yard line, they open shop with another first down. Show a little shift in the backfield. Masterson hands off and they run right and get a nice block to lead the way and they're inside the 30. Now this defensive unit's gonna be under the gun to stop a potent offense. The front four, Adams, Taylor, Brown, and Lopez look for the pass rush from those defensive ends. The backers, Walker, Osborne, and McDonald. And that Kennedy secondary will have their hands full. Four deep, the corners, Grant and James, while Calvin and Day are the safeties. Gain of seven, second and three. Football right at the Kennedy 30. The light's not yet taking hold. Well. Off the right side and the play's gonna go to about the 25 yard line. I'll tell you, they ran to the near sideline with that pitch and Nick Lopez, their fullback, I'll tell you, he's a great blocker out front. 
and Gideon picking up the necessary yards to move the chains and uh, watch them work that near sideline and then work that boot off that near si sideline. Second first down in the drive. Rosemont rolling, their proficient offense is held up steadily for three games, all of them routes. Off tackle left and the pile surges forward and they get a better gain out of that than it initially looked like they could get. Well. And Ramel Marlang with that carrier and he's been very productive both as a ball carrier and a receiver. Well, he is. He's an outstanding linebacker. He's only about 5'6", but I tell you, he's a power plant and runs hard. He, he picked up a good seven on that straight dive option play. He just handed it to the first back through. Second and four upcoming. Masterson under center. Wow, that was a great line surge right there by the Kennedy defense. And, man, they got some tremendous push by a couple of players, one of them, the first to make contact, Nick McDonald. Well, it'd be interesting here, you got a third and a long one, almost two yards to go. Now I know they've run the first two downs here, they just came straight at him with dives, but I look for him to go to Broadnecks. He wants to throw, he does, he's got a hook up out in the left flat, plenty for a first down. And a nice carry after the grab to get near the 10 yard line. Excellent run after the catch. Nick Lopez, the fullback, as we mentioned, their backs are excellent receivers, but we have a penalty marker dropped and we'll see how we sort this one out. Eagle, illegal shift on the part of the Wolverines here. So instead of you know picking up that nice first down with a pass to Lopez, why ever set them back now into third and 11. Let's see how they play the big wide receiver, DeMarco Brodnex on that far side and Gooding. Probable passing down out of the pistol. They throw left and they've got a grab out there and just as his name and number were called out, a reception out there, excellent job of getting free, the tight end, Elijah Tayon. Let's take another look. Tayon on a, on a cross route, uh, didn't pick up the necessary yards. He picked up about eight, eight or nine, but not enough for in a fourth down situation. Fourth and three. Football parked at the 18 yard line. So all or nothing here for the Wolverines going on fourth. Nothing new. Here's a toss. Gideon swarmed under and wiped out. Excellent defensive stand and the ball goes over on downs. Tremendous lateral pursuit that time by Kennedy's defensive left. So, an opportunity unfulfilled. First and 10 for the Cougars. Credit their defense. And I'm quite sure defensive coordinator Jamel Johnson is happy about that stand. So, from the 20, backfield is full. Turn and give, they sweep right. Good containment, but excellent running that time on the sweep. And Calvin, the ball carrier that time. Well, fumble and Kennedy takes over, I'll tell you that. First play from scrimmage. The Rosemont team takes over. Football parked at the 28, and here's how the turnover occurred. Here we go, watch 33 do the job here. Romel Marling is right there on the right on the ball. Put a helmet right on the ball. 
great chance for Rosemont. Let's see if they can capitalize. Hitch pass is complete. And nearly breaking away for Moore, showing some tough running skills. Brodnax, dangerous receiver there. So they're back on the move. And the earlier defensive stand by Kennedy, not rewarded by the offensive unit. And they're going to have to try to do it again. Football at the 21. Well, picked up a nice eight-yard gain there. And uh, with a second and two, it enables Masterson to pretty much, and Coach Wanlin to call anything in his playbook here. This is a nice play action down. Masterson rushed hard, throws for the left corner. He's got a man out there. Touchdown Wolverines on a perfect strike to Darion Gooding. Masterson put that right where it belonged. Pinpoint strike. A 22-yard aerial connection for the six. And that is his 10th TD pass of the year. Uh, he put the nose of the football and just let Gooding run to the ball. PAT. Conti knocks it home and Early here in the first, seven nothing. Rosemont, we'll be right back. Hassan Conte, a bounding kickoff outside the 30. Fielded there on the dead run, and a big run back along the left sideline, and that is going the distance. Wow, just like that. 66 yards. Let's see if we got any markers down. Well, That was quite a run by Zion James. The Z-man just smoked that right up the sideline. Evidently, a hold against the Cougars will nullify that excellent run back by James. Tough luck. Beautiful evening over here in the Rosemont High School territory. Continuing to cool off and make things pleasant for this crowd. And, and, of course, the host crowd happy about that penalty. Tough luck again for Kennedy. Open shop at the 36-yard line. They run left and nearly make the 40. Cook with the carry, and he makes the 38-yard line. We're going to call it a gain of three, second and seven. They run left. They Negligible run. gain. He makes the 40, and they're still going to need a good five yards or so. Well, and let's take a look now at this Kennedy offense. Weltman at the quarterback position. Calvin and Cook, the running backs. The wingman is Grant. Rajon Day at wide. And the tight is Dante Adams. Up front, they're going to need plenty of excellent blocking. Guter, Lau, Lee, Jordan Stewart, and Tay Taylor. Well, he ran that draw play to the near sideline and picked up a penalty and We'll see what the official, I didn't quite see the mechanics on there. Illegal procedure, 
against uh, the Kennedy. Now they've got the first and 15. Well, they got it listed as second and about 14. Let's see if uh, the Cougars want to go upstairs. They do not. They toss and try to run wide. Plenty of defense out there, and that play is shut down. Cook with the carry makes the 35. On defense, Rosemont tough on the defensive ends. Angeles and Peterson in tight. Drew Drew and Scott. The backers, a hard hitting group. The Marlangs, Tayon and Nathaniel Jones. And then just three deep in the secondary, DeMarco Brodnax and Gideon at the corners. The free safety tonight, Darion Gooding. Well, key down here for the Cougars with a third and 11 uh, on the right hash mark, key down. Wing T offense for the Cougars. He keeps it and he's gonna run around the right end and get blasted out of bounds shy of the 40 yard line, well short of a first. That time, uh, Weltman really not much running room. Not much running room and uh, you know, he gave up on his receivers early and they didn't come back to the ball. He only picked up a yard. So it'll bring up fourth and long. Kennedy needs to make the 46 yard line to sustain, but we're gonna have a called timeout here by the Cougars. And we'll come right back after this short timeout. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer doesn't just change the way you feel, it changes the way you look. From losing your hair, even your eyebrows, to changes in your skin and nails, cancer treatment can rob you of your confidence and self-esteem. But look good, feel better changes all that. More than 800,000 women have learned how to address the appearance side effects of cancer treatment through our workshops. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a free workshop near you. Let Look Good Feel Better help you feel like you again. Well, the timeout has concluded. Don't know what Kennedy had to talk about, but they're looking at a fourth and seven and an apparent punt. As well, finally, Jacob Medellis is back deep to do the punting. Single safety shown. Not much O tonight for Kennedy. Five plays, nine yards, and three penalties against him. There's the punt. A nice one that they're going to let bounce. It goes laterally and then trickles inside the 35 where it's downed at the 32. And that is the field position where the Wolverines will take over. 30-yard punt by Modellis. A 7-0 lead early on as Rosemont has been given new life on a couple of occasions here to sustain their offense and they do click on the aerial connection from Masterson to Gooding for the touchdown. Well, we've moved past the dusk stage. It's continuing to darken in and around the stadium here. The light's beginning to take hold. Triple wide receivers to the near side for Masterson and the Wolverines. They turn and give, running play off the right side. And they've got some fine backs. That one looked like Marlang, who alternates with Nick Lopez at that fullback position. Well, yes, yeah, he's a load. They just ran that, looked like their inside zone play away from trip set. And they looked to see how they play trips. They lined up trips wide and came back to the near side. Like I said, with inside zone, I like the way this Marlang runs. He wasn't listed as a starter. He's the inside linebacker, runs very hard and low to the ground. You see part of the sideline there of the Wolverines. Gain of three, second and seven. And a whistle's gonna stop play here. And let's see if it is a called timeout. Apparently it is. And it comes. Well, Rick Wanlin is in his 10th year guiding 
the Rosemont Wolverines. He's had seven winning seasons. He's 4-0 this year, but his best start, Jim, was back in 2013. Well, I remember that ball club, and it was a good one. And uh, they got seven straight victories on the way to a playoff berth. So Rick's done a tremendous job here. As you mentioned before, he's a winner of uh, the Coaches Awards as a model coach. And... You can hear the Rosemont band. Lots of pageantry here this evening, generated by Rosemont High, the host this evening to the Kennedy Cougars. And the host on top, seven, nothing. About five minutes left here in the first quarter. So double wide to the near side. However, they run it and a, a loose football, I believe is. Yes. He Fit. coughed it up on a hard Fit. shot right. and Kennedy recovered. Isaac Lopez was alert, picked up, scooped up the ball, Isaac Lopez, and advanced it about five yards. So Kennedy gets a big break here. And now we have a fumble uh, turnover on each team. Let's take a look at this. There you see a mixed handoff there. And alert 56, Isaac Lopez picks it up. And Kennedy has got a good chance here and make amends of their fumble. Gideon never did have control of the football. So from the 26 yard line, they run left. Nice quick cut and a good gain on first down. Running the football that time is Xavier Calvin. I like the way he cut in the running lane, Will. He turned it on. He looked like he was gonna go outside. There was a running lane there. He got upfield, he got vertical and picked up about seven. Gain of seven. Football parked at the Rosemont 19. Golden opportunity for visiting Kennedy to square things here. They're down seven, nothing. Here's a toss, a bad pitch. Cook is up to get it and reverses field, trying to get outside and cannot. A splendid solo tackle that time from the secondary up fast. That was a superior effort by Ian Marlang. Yeah. Lost him two. Watch the outside backer. I'm, I'm impressed with these Marlang boys. There's a missed tackle. And now Cook going up the field, but he gets wrapped up real quick like. Third and five from the 21. And whistles are stopping play. Timeout by one of these teams. And so far, Chris Ganip. I guess he signals Rosemont wants to look it over here. About three minutes left in the first period. Kennedy down seven, nothing, but with an opportunity following the fumble recovery. Well, coach Jason Brewer, the defensive coordinator, did not like that defensive look versus the offense as they broke to huddle, Will, and he wisely called the timeout. That was a good timeout by coach Brewer. Uh, who's been with Coach Wanlum for some time, one of the better defensive coordinators. Kennedy's anxious to go. They're not going, they're not gonna huddle. They got the play they wanna run. Third and five from the Rosemont 21. Single wideout deployed to the near side. Cook hit in the backfield just as he got the ball. There was no way in the world on that. Tobias Scott was all over him. No, he was right in his shirt. And, you know, uh, he faked it one, one back, and nobody touched the second back. How? Well, they've lost five yards on the previous two carries, minus two, minus three, fourth now, and eight. Football just inside the 26. Weltman under center, taking his time. Turn and give, they run left, outside wide, and there may be enough for a first down on that carry by Garner, man, man, Garner. First down, Cougars. 
Well, there was no ruin. They ran that. They ran that power sweep to the near sideline, and I'll give credit to Garner. He got all he could on that play, going hard, running vertical. They salvage on fourth down. Now they're set up with a first and ten from the 13. Turn and give it to him again, and he trips and falls. Maybe a yard gain there. Second down upcoming and under two minutes to go now in the first quarter. No gain, second and 10, still at the 13 yard line. Under center, Weltman. Whistles blow this dead. Gee whiz, we've had a lot of that so far here in the first quarter. Well, we have, Weltman is trying to mix up his signals here. Well, Chris Ganip has the answer for us. Good ball, approach me, on the offense, five yard penalty, replay, second down. That's a rare encroachment on the offense. Generally in an encroachment, it's a defensive move, but uh, Weltman was trying to mix up the count and I tell you, he, they're worried about Marling blitzing again. The Marling boys, I tell you, they blitz and find gaps. Second and 15 from the 18. Kennedy trying to move forward. Nothing doing. Tobias was all over that play. Uh, I tell you, he's free practically most of the time. Like they're not trying to block him. He sheds blocks. Tobias Scott. No gain, third and 15. Home crowd coming alive, wanting more defense. Turn and give, they run left. There's a little bit of a hole, but it's sealed up fast and stopped. I'm surprised at the call. Surprised, that's a long 13. And you're running off tackle, picking up three only. Garner the carry. It's gonna bring up fourth and 12 from the 16 yard line. And the clock counting down, they may or may not get this play off. And the quarter, I believe, has concluded, but this play looks like it's gonna go. He wants to throw to the end zone. Broken up, nearly picked. And the drive fizzles after the fumble recovery. Credit the Rosemont defense. And good secondary coverage by Darion Gooding. Well, while we're, while we're transitioning to the Rosemont offense, the timing in the backfield and the handoffs, that really the timing seems to be way off on those handoffs with Kennedy, whether they have new people coming in or injured people. It does look like there's something amiss from the 16 yard line, first down for Masterson and the offense. A running play and a flag flies late. Yeah, we got a mask. We got a face mask penalty. Gideon had the carry and we'll hear from Chris Ganip. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. Well, that's four penalties, I believe, on Kennedy this evening. And they've coughed up a fumble. So as far as your keys are concerned, coach. There they are. There they are. Yes, they are there. First and 10 after the 15 yarder from the 34. Short yardage run play, crosses the 35, makes the 37. Gideon, about a four yard carry. Let's see where they spot him. Go, go, go. 
This quarter has expired here at Rosemont High School after the first period. Rosemont on top, 7 nothing. Don't go away because we'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Welcome back to the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Rosemont has the football, and in a moment, we're gonna check in with our pal, Lauren Goodman, with some updates from around the area. Right now, second and seven from the Rosemont 37. Masterson, a little flip, and it's well defended, but two broken tackles make something out of nothing. It's a loss on the play, but the carry does get back to the 35. They lose a couple, make it third and nine. Lauren? What's happening around the area? Well, some interesting scores we might be wanting to look at. Number six, Rockland from Domino's Dozen is up 10-0, and Capital Christian has a 7-0 lead over Christian Brothers. Back to you. Thanks, Goody. Yes, there's some major matchups around the area. In some areas, league play has started, like the Sierra Foothill League, Delta League, and in others, still non-leaguers, like this game here tonight. Second and eight from the 36. Correction, third and eight. Fires out to the right side. A short hook up to Gooding, and he breaks two tackles and weaves through the defense. Crosses the midfield stripe, and he makes the Kennedy 43. Catch and run. That's a Rick Wanlin special. The short toss and then go. Here's another look. Watch this. Quickly, he gets the ball out. The five Gooding, Darian. Makes a great move there. Picks up an additional five, six yards. He's coming into this game. He has 109 yards, averaging 10 yards per catch. Gain of 20 on the play. First and 10 from the Kennedy 44. We're early here in the second quarter. Rosemont up 7-0. Anybody's game so far. Masterson double clutches and throws over the middle, and he's got an open receiver on a crossing pattern. Darion Gooding. Well, it worked before, why not come back to it? He threw a shot right over the middle. Let's take another look. Okay, there you see Masterson back the threat. There it is, wide open. Gain of 16 on the play. First and 10, Rosemont, the football parked at the 28 yard line. Wolverines on the move. They dispatch three wide outs to the near side, one to the left. Big rush, screen set up, incomplete on the flip. Yeah, it was set up and he threw the bad pass to 33, Marlang, open in the middle there. Very fortunate for Kennedy. Good call by the bench, by offensive coordinator. It's his first incompletion of the evening. Kyle Masterson came in with a 63% completion rate on 44 out of 70 coming in at game time. He's already thrown his 10th touchdown of the season. Under center this time, turn and give, and getting on, tried the juke move there, but the defense was ready. Well. Good job by the Kennedy D here. Let's see if they rise to the occasion now and keep them out of the red zone. Oh, we have a flag. I'm not getting the mechanics here. It's a late flag. Late flag, yeah. And here's the call. After the play was over, dead ball, personal foul, Ooh. Illegal helmet contact on number 56. He is ejected from the game. 
Oh. Well, that is unfortunate. Isaac Lopez, a key factor for Kennedy, a starter at defensive end. He also does the long snapping on special teams on kicks. Tough luck. Lopez is done for the night. And the blow to the head, certainly something serious and to be scrutinized. It comes early here in the second quarter. Head coach Brian Lewis of Kennedy, he'll have to shift now his defensive alignment. And that's, uh, that requires a large pair of feet to fill those shoes. Very definitely. Lopez, one of the top linemen in that Metro League, and it's the officials who are marching off that dead ball foul. That's another 15, and they are piling up the penalty yardage. So the march puts the football right along that 15-yard line. First down, first and 10, Rosemont. Six penalties for 50 yards. And at that rate, I don't. <laughs> Big speed up the middle and a burst to the five. Well, did he got off? He well, sure did. Wow. And that right side got off. That's a big burst. That was uh, it looks straight like heat right there. And again, it was Gideon. And he was doing some stepping right there. Well, that's as hard as I've seen him run tonight here. A great get off. Great get off by the right side of the line. Really by Angelus and Scott got off the football. Second and about a foot. Football parked at the five yard line. They run right, smack near the goal line. Touchdown Wolverine. As they blast it in there. And Gideon puts the finishing touches on a short drive. A five yard run, and again, the excellent line blocking evident. Well, it looks like they've moved Peterson in at right guard and give Angelus a break. Number 54, Peterson and Scott are getting off the football. Here's the PAT. A line drive, got it, as Hassan Conte connects for the second time. Here's another look at the run play, and you see the hole and the daylight, then the power plus. Don't wander off. We'll be right back. More of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Rosemont set to kick off, leading at 14-0 after an 84-yard drive in nine plays. Out of bounds on the kickoff. There's the compulsory flag. And we'll see where Kennedy lines up. But wherever they line up, this is a crucial possession. They need to get on the scoreboard. Well, as we said initially prior to game time, uh, again, when we talk about keys, uh, battling in the trenches, mistakes and penalties we've seen, Turnovers take place, hurting Kennedy. First half scoring, uh, still at, again, we're only not even midway in the second quarter, but uh, as you said, Will, Kennedy needs something to get into this game. They cannot afford to get up for another TD and not respond and stay in this football game. I know it's early, but. In offense for Kennedy, 12 plays have netted 24 yards. Uh, that's not the type of arithmetic that wins football games, making this series of downs even more crucial for the Cougars. 
Under center, Weltman, he wants to throw over the middle. A high strike, incomplete. His receiver was wide open and obviously frustrated on the play was Malachi Grant, who got a hand on it but couldn't hold it. Well, the ball was catchable, and uh, he had two receivers wide open. And let's see what he goes. Apparently, Weltman's going to go to the air. And like I said, their running attack hasn't showed much except for occasionally decent run on the far side. They seem to have some timing issues on the run game, Will. So. Second and 10, tight formation. Wing T style here at Kennedy. Weltman, turn and give. They run right. It's well defended. They went to the short side of the field where there was no room on the carry that time by Calvin. A gain of one, third and nine. Football parked at the Kennedy 36. As we're on the flip side of quarter number two. Again, we are without the benefit of precise clock management, so we're hedging on the time a little bit. 14-0 Rosemont. Weltman wants to throw, heavy pressure. He fires out to the right side, incomplete. And that makes him 0 for 3 in the passing department, and that brings up a fourth down and nine. Well, the protection, there was little to none. I mean, I thought maybe it was a screen pass because the gates were open. Well, I mean, really, he had no time to throw. Fourth down. I don't know what this formation holds, but a possible punt here. High snap, but a whistle's going to kill the play. Yeah, that's a delay of ball game. I'm, I'm assuming delay of game. So it's Weltman was back in punt formation. And uh, things essentially going from bad to worse for the visiting Kennedy Cougars. They just have been unable to put it together. Time out Rosemont. And... At this point in time, I'm quite sure Rick Wanlin feels that uh, he's in a position to really go for a thicker lead at the intermission. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, and there you see that uh, rooting section uh, really wrapping it up here at Rosemont, getting all excited. That's Rose a nice band they got there. Yes, they do. They, and, they're high, and look at that. They're really uh, they're with it because this ball club is unbeaten coming in here tonight. They are showing their support for, for Rick Wanlin's ball club. Uh, again, uh, in that formation they had prior to the timeout, uh, would Weltman kick or throw off it? We'll find out, I guess. Uh, he certainly was deep enough to throw off that. Um, whether he's going to punt or not, uh, he's back now a good 10, 12 yards. And look at the formation. Uh, you got potentially uh, four wide receivers and a punter, another high snap. He's up to get it and gets off a wobbly punt toward the right sideline. Takes a bounce and is going to take a favorable hop for Kennedy where it's downed at about the 33-yard line. Well, I can tell you this, that their lo when they lost Lopez, the reason you see that bad snap is they lost Lopez in the D line, but he is their long snapper. And so now you can see the problems they're running into when they do punt. Well, when you have starters suddenly and abruptly removed, uh, it requires a, an immediate change. Sometimes it's not always in sync. That's the case at this point in time. Nevertheless, first and 10 for Rosemont. They'll open shop from their 33-yard line. They run right, short yardage, good defense that time. And well, getting um, getting picking up a couple of yards, tough yards, and Dante Adams got a piece of him and brought him down. Um, I would say that 14-0, uh, 
Uh, I think he'll surprise you with a pass or two. He does run a balanced attack when you count his passes and runs for the year, but uh, they can keep the ball on the ground and use up the quarter. Gain of one, second and nine. Bigger hole this time and a blast to the 40-yard line. Shy of a first by about three yards. It'll bring up third and three. And again, they're getting good results with an offensive line push and a quick burst. Yes, very definitely. Uh, they're getting good blocking up front. Gideon's uh, getting a real workout tonight. Yes, he is, but they've got a good front there. Uh, Angelus is in there running, and 61 is in there. Uh, Scott having a good one, and then they've moved Malik Peterson into that guard spot, so they've got uh, some good blockers up front. Gideon with his 12th carry. Quick flip, Masterson incomplete going out to the left side. Didn't quite square up on that as he was going for Gooding. No, he rushed himself really. Hit. Yeah, he was trying to throw off his back foot and he wasn't really set. So it'll bring up a fourth and three and a punt formation shown by the Wolverines. Well, you know, Elijah Tayon dispatch to do the punting and twin receivers for Kennedy. One step, a wobbler away from the returners and a penalty mark is thrown. We'll wait and see about that. Well, while we're waiting, Will, it's surprising to me when you've got a 14-0 lead that you wouldn't now try to put your third TD and go get out front by three touchdowns and put this game away early. It's very surprising that Rick stayed really, really uh, very conservative in that series and ended up punting. 22 yards on the punt, and we'll see about the penalty. And it's kind of looking like it's going to be against Kennedy. <laughs> Here's the call. Personal foul, face mask on the return team. Oh, brother. That penalty will be assessed from the end of the kick, first down. Well, this is uh, really too bad for Kennedy. The self-destruction with the penalties is really hurting them. You spoke of that early in the ball game about the keys and matchups. And self-inflicted uh, is just counterproductive, and they need all the production they can get right now. They're down 14 zip, second quarter. They've been penalized seven times for 65 yards, and their net yardage is almost microscopic. They just have been unable to click. The run game has not registered much, and the passing game so far are non-existent. Well, when you self-destruct, Will, I'd like to know what their average penalties per game was coming into this, to this contest. I really like would, because I'm seeing a lot of undisciplined play going on here. It's got to end somewhere. So the Cougars up to the line, badly in need of some offense. There's, there's a gang tackle. The Rosemont defense not tricked on that play, not fooled at all. And a rude awakening that time. No gain. Well, I think Coach Lewis, I don't know who called that timeout, but I can tell you there was a lot of movement on the Kennedy Ball Club prior to that snap. It's going to bring up a second and 10 from the 20 when they come out of this timeout. Rosemont has already burned up their timeouts. Kennedy has one remaining as we get closer to the intermission. It's been very festive this evening here at Rosemont High School. The band is in top form and the support here in the bleachers for Rosemont has been terrific. Second and 10, they run right, it's contained, they get a yard. 
third and nine. While it has been all Rosemont this evening, it could be worse. This high-powered Rosemont offense has been contained to some measure with a couple of touchdowns. The first one set up with a fumble recovery that put them immediately in the red zone. Kennedy defense has been out there a lot. Kennedy offense unable to generate a drive. Welding, looking, firing to the sideline. It's about 10 yards out of bounds. Yeah, we got a flag down yes, there. Yes, we do. And near the line of scrimmage, one was dropped. Yeah, we got offensive holding, and I'll tell you, Rosemont's going to turn it down and turn it down and receive holding the punt. On the offense, that penalty will be declined. Brings up fourth down. Well, mistakes come in many forms, and we've seen several of them this evening. That would have been the eighth penalty on Kennedy, but it's declined fourth and eight. Presumably a punt upcoming. Weltman up to get it. Line drives one toward the Kennedy sideline and out of bounds. It makes the 40 yard line or so, but a relatively short punt. And this Rosemont offense takes over with excellent field position. A 17 yard punt. Well, first of all, he had to secure the snap. And uh, when you lose your first string, Long snapper, uh, a lot of teams don't have, they should have a backup or a third backup if necessary, but. Masterson. They run right, terrific line push right there to open that up. Lopez just followed Peterson and Scott up front, getting off. Watch this, a straight dive. Gain of six and power plus. He runs straight up, but always falls forward, according to his coach. Angeles, 55, back at right guard, replacing Peterson. He was getting a break on the last series. Baxter split behind Masterson. He keeps it and tosses. Here's some running room along the right sideline, and Gideon gets near the 10 before he's knocked out of bounds by two Cougars. They run that dive option and half the team collapsed on the dive back. Nice read by quarterback Masterson. And he delivered on that because he was getting hit when he pitched. 24 yards and here's how it went down. There's the pitch while he's getting hit. Gideon off to the races. Dragged down there fortunately for Kennedy. Teaming for the stop Malachi Grant and Rajon Day of the Cougars but First and goal from the eight. They run right, getting on near the goal line. Touchdown, Wolverines. Gedeon scores from eight yards out, and he's had quite an evening. Well, he's running hard, and the line's getting off the football. And uh, that, that's uh, a touchdown that uh, could put uh, a little icing. I know it's early in this ball game, but uh, a big touchdown prior to the half. Hassan Conta with the PAT, 21-0. Rosemont Gideon has hit pay dirt multiple times this evening. Stay with us. It's a short drive from your neighborhood to your naturehood. 
To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Hassan Kanta with the kickoff. More of a pooch fielded at the 20. A reversal now toward the near side. Speed to the outside, picking up some blocks. What a return. Excellent job, Calvin. Xavier Calvin, 30 yards on the run back. It's been their best single play. Calvin with a very nice run back, putting him right at just about midfield. The previous scoring drive, three plays covering 39 yards for the Wolverines with Gideon carrying the final eight. He's got 14 carries, 68 yards, and a pair of touchdowns for the Wolverines. Well, he comes in here with a 7.2 carry, their leading ball carry, two touchdowns. He's got three passes for 31 yards coming in, so you can see uh, Gideon having a big night and uh, certainly 100 plus yards are within his reach tonight. Like I said, coming in here with 282, and even though they have four wins, one was a forfeit victory, so he was averaging almost 100 a night in the previous encounter as well. That's the final timeout spent. We're under five minutes remaining here in the first half at Rosemont High School. Rosemont, oh my goodness, in comparison, Offensive production, Kennedy 0 for 4 through the air, and they've totaled 27 yards for the game thus far. Well, you can see why scoring is difficult for them. They're in great field position now. From the midfield stripe. Twin right to the far side. Weltman. Still in at QB, they hand off and run left. Nice cut and a break to the outside. And Cook is about as speedy and shifty as you can get. And that's been their best run from scrimmage. And they needed that. Kiwan Cook, 19 yards. Here's another look. Watch this from the double twin. Double twin him running in here. And they played a little seven on seven. Outstanding run by Cook. Nice sideline camera work. I bet you that's David Stewart down there for Access Sacramento. Hometown sports game of the week. Kennedy, first and 10 from the 31. Look left and fire incomplete. The pass intended for Kennedy's Nick McDonald looked like incomplete second and 10. Important drive for Kennedy here. They've got to respond being down three touchdowns. Big drive. Well, let's see. Double wide to the left and the right. A fumble and scooped to prevent a recovery. The fake was bobbled and mishandled. Tough luck. They lose four on the play. It's going to bring up third and 14 as the football's back at the 35-yard line. Well, it seems to me when they just snap the ball to the, in a shotgun position rather than fake the play action, they got a better chance. This quarterback doesn't have a lot of experience. Weltman, he's got to see his receivers. Well, basically the same formation, two and two, left and right, single back. Four-man rush, Weltman to throw, goes for the end zone. A crowd incomplete. Broken up and it was a collision among a few of those players and slow to get up, possibly dinged on the play. One of the Kennedy wideouts. Well, if you looks see like that, Rajon Day. it looks like the one Kennedy receiver took it away from the other one. Watch them both go for the football. Day number 11. He's Day knifed in 
and in front of Xavier Calvin, probably the intended receiver, incomplete. 0 for 6 through the air now for Weltman. Fourth and 14, now or never on this drive. Straight drop, throws over the middle, incomplete. Good coverage on a low throw there. And again, Calvin, the intended receiver, a tough chance there, and the ball goes over on downs. So Rosemont will open shop at their 35. That's the second time Kennedy has turned over on downs after coming up empty on fourth down attempts. Masterson and company have performed well. Counter play, big room. That must be Lopez to the 50. That was a 15 yard burst. Yes, it was Lopez. He run that quarterback with that fullback delay like a draw. Looked like, here he is, wide open. Tough man to bring down right there. And we're going to credit Thomas Walker for the stop. He wears number 10 for the Cougars. So actually they spot him at the 30, at the 49 yard line, call it a 14 yard rumble. They go left with Gideon. He turns the corner, first down, and sh chased out of bounds. If he went down on the track, there would have been a late hit. Number we're, five on the replay. We're going to see an excellent block. Number five out in front. Watch Goodig. Right there. He took out Cook. Enabled nice. him to turn the corner. Nice job by Darian Cooding. Nice, Cooding. nice recognition by Rob Bimson, our statistician. So it's going to bring up a first and 10 from the 38. Miss, missed tackles, and the carry goes to the 31, a seven yard pickup. Well, look like Lopez again on that draw. He's breaking tackles, Lopez on that draw, fullback draw. Wide open. Gideon getting a break coming to the sideline here. Two minutes left in the half. Let's see if Masterson can take Rosemont to the pay dirt again. Run play. And yeah. that's going to be a first down for the Wolverines. Nice carry by the big guy, Nick Lopez. Nick Lopez running for big yardage that time. Rayshon Day finally helped with the stop. Lopez going vertical. Watch the give to him. Picking up yardage after contact. So they work from the 28-yard line. Time getting tight. Masterson, play fake, throws. Got a wide open man. Touchdown Wolverines. Darion Gooding was open from here to Rancho Cordova. 27 yards on the aerial connection. I love that call. He ran that ISO or, or lead, lead pass, faked it. Beautiful. Faked that ISO play. Play action, beautiful job by Masterson. 27. On for the PAT, Hassan Kanta. Spotted, booted, on the way, and got it. Let's take a look Watch as Masterson. we go to replay here. Masterson putting that one right where it needed to be and Gooding as open as you can get. We'll be right back. It's a beautiful day out here. Sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 70 miles per hour winds are expected. Authorities 
asking everyone, stay indoors! Come on, that's it, let's go! Here's the Rosemont kickoff. It's out of bounds to the far side. We're less than two minutes to go here in the first half. It's been all Rosemont. That scoring drive, 65 yards, five plays, and just over three minutes. Well, they'll try the kickoff again. The repeat requested uh, with the idea of a possible run back. Right now though, the Wolverines and head coach Rick Wanlin sitting on a 28 point cushion as you see there. Brian Lewis, head coach for Kennedy, hoping to get something out of special teams here on this play prior to the conclusion of the half. Well, again, even though they have a huge lead, I might I might run a pooch kick here, not an onside kick, not to, to get, not to cause a bigger return. There's a bounding kick, bobbled, fallen on, and possession for Kennedy at the Cougar 41. Well, I can understand Coach Wanlin's feeling because he doesn't want to risk a big play run back. Well, the Wolverines entered play this evening with a 4-0 mark, looking now like that will improve to 5-0 unless Kennedy puts a complete reversal on this ball game in the second half. Well, they've got to limit mistakes and penalties. That's what's self-destructing them. Well, McDonald and Day out near to the near side to, and Weltman looks to throw, fires toward the sideline, high and incomplete. The middle of the field, as you can see, you could draw a circle. See where the circle is? Around the emblem? Like there's no receivers in that circle. Well, I guess the idea is to try to get to the sideline and get out of bounds, but hey, a good connection in the middle with their kind of speed could result in a touchdown. And there you saw number 22, Ian Marlang, one of the excellent two-way players for Rosemont. Second and 10 from the 41. Same basic formation. Welton throw, fires a bullet, incomplete. Well, that, uh, Not a tremendous effort there. No. That time by Rajon Day. Wow. And he had plenty of cushion. Nobody was on him. Nine attempts, zero completions through the air. Third and ten. Another four wide receiver formation uncharacteristic of a wing T. Decent protection, sideline route, overthrown, not real catchable. Intended receiver, McDonald. Well, he lost a shoe on that play. Don't know if that affected the route or not, but that makes over 10. Well, once again, we saw timing uh, miscues on the run game and now you're seeing the tempo or timing on the passing game is off. That's a long pass to throw a 10, 12 yard out. Fourth down. And now or never for the Cougars if they want to try to take a shot at the end zone. Big rush, trouble, sack. Woo wee, that was rough. That defensive front led by Junior Drew Jew was on him like a rash. A 10 yard loss and 
He checks in at six feet, 325 pounds, and I do believe Weltman probably felt all that. Yes, Junior Drew Drew. Drew Drew is sizable. He's about three at least. Less than a minute remaining here in the first half. Rosemont again taking over on downs. Out to the right side, Brodnax finally contained and a late whistle uh, as the gang tackle is applied. No timeouts left, they have to hustle. Clock winding down, 24 seconds to go in the half. Four wideouts, two left, two right. Masterson fires deep left corner. Incomplete. Well, a very fortunate there. Broadnax, the intended receiver. Grant defending down there did a great job. Grant, boy, I tell you, that, uh, if that ball is thrown correctly, was underthrown, uh, we could have another touchdown. He got safety help from Calvin. So that brings up a second and 10. So we'll see how the clock management is here. Five wide receivers in a the game. There's big, big rush, nowhere to go. That is a sack. And Masterson tried to escape, but by that time, nothing doing. Well, he wisely, he, Better to take a sack than throw a pick. They lose 11 on the play. And this, I believe, is the conclusion of the first half. It is, and a look at the scoreboard, it has been all Rosemont leading at 28 to nothing here in this non-leaguer in a week four ball game. And uh, I'm sure Rick Wanlin's pleased with his team's overall performance and probably the reverse for Brian Lewis and the Kennedy Brain Trust. Well, very definitely. Um, when you're coming here, 0-3 coming in and you don't have any points scored, why just uh, <clears throat> very discouraging. Well, in just a moment, We'll hear from the man himself. Let's go ahead and toss it down to Lauren Goodman. She's standing by with Rick Wanlin. Goody? Well, I'm here with Rick Wanlin, like you just said. Coach, you guys came out to a terrific start, 28-0 for the most part. What allowed you guys to be so successful in that first half? Honestly, uh, I believe it's just our front line. Uh, we've been working real hard. They're very, very well conditioned. So I, we found something in the second quarter where we could start pounding the ball inside a little bit. And I think by doing that, opened up some of the passing at the end. So. Very happy with the effort of the kids. Well, you two teams have definite history between each other. And how do you keep your team focused with such a big lead and to finish out this game strong? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we're going to talk to them right now. Uh, almost treat it like it's 0 0 right now. And let's just step back on that. Net. And we're going to kick off. They're going to come out trying to score. So get our defense pumped up and just try to keep, keep it rolling. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank good you. luck in the second Thank half. You. Will. Thanks, Goody. Um, stated emphatically, yet humbly, and certainly uh, Rick Wanlin, I'm sure, will issue the uh, necessary uh, comments. And, you know, certainly it's a, a special occasion for head coach Rick Wanlin. He was bestowed an honor few people are recognized for, and that is being named a model coach, Jim well, I know that they, the, the Sac Joaquin section picks very few. As you can see the criteria here for such an honor as Rosemont is given to coaches who demonstrate qualities of positive role models in their community. And certainly Coach Rick Wanlin does that. He's a good football coach. He's a good wrestling coach. He's an outstanding teacher, but he's very involved with the community. And that's how you win one of those awards. Generally, they only give out five or six out of 200 high schools in the Sac Joaquin section. So that's quite an honor when you're named as one of the model coaches 
which he was for the year 2018 and 19. Uh, really well deserved for an outstanding teacher, mentor, and coach. Well, that is a great honor indeed. Let's rejoin Lauren Goodman. She has something for us right now. Goody. Well, guys, I'm here with the bosses, pretty much, people that run the show here at Rosemont. We're going to start with the principal first, Elizabeth V. Hill. Talk to me about your school. Tell me about the number of students here and what goes on at Rosemont. Well, we have about 1,400 students, but this year we have the biggest freshman class we've had in many years. And we're just all about getting the kids prepared, but starting them off and getting them connected to their school, having fun, having high expectations for them, and getting them connected to each other and to their school. Well, there's a lot of school spirit out here tonight. You're in a jersey. What has turned over in Rosemont and helped the culture be so positive here? I think it's just that's the dream for our kids. So we've really worked hard at that, and uh, we've got the, the support of a great staff. Our parents are amazing, and they come out, and it's just a, it's a, a group effort. Well, you guys aren't that fairly old. Just talk to me some about your academic strengths and what Rosemont provides academically. Well, it's kind of like everything else. We're on an upward trend, had really high test scores this year, which is just one piece, but it's an indication. Uh, AP scores, some of which doubled. So we're really working. The focus is academic. So no matter what, that's the focus. And everyone's just doing their part to make sure that our kids leave here prepared for anything they want to do. Well, it seems like you guys are having a lot of fun here and you're handling it in the books. Now, when we talk about athletics, I get to come over here to Scott Maddox. Just talk to me about something else that's going on other than football. Uh, we have volleyball and water polo starting up league play next week. Cross country and girls golf have already started league play, and they're doing pretty well. We're just trying to get better every single week. And uh, when you have people like Mr. Neff out here with our band kind of making the school you know, spirit go and setting the tone for our game and the cheerleaders doing what they do, it's, it's, it makes my job easy. Well, your band definitely made a, a statement when they came into the building tonight. Can you talk to me a little bit more about their new coach and some of the things that they're doing? He came from the University of Oregon where he was in the band, and he's taken a lot of the passion that, that the university does and brought it here to Rosemont. Uh, but prior to this, our kids, our student section wasn't anything like this. He's really transformed it and really set a tone for the night. Well, it seems like you guys are handling business on both sides, academically and athletically. You guys had a big turnout tonight in the crowd. Just talk to me a little bit more about your student athletes and some goals you may have for them. Our student athletes, it's more about life skills. It's not just the athletics. Where the things that they're going to learn about themselves when playing the sports, that it's going to transform their lives. They're going to learn time management, commitment, sacrifice, things that's going to make them successful later in life, in the classroom and on the field. Well, I am really outstandingly proud of Rosemont and interested in some things that they got going here. Will, back to you. Thank you, Goody. Certainly, Rosemont High buzzing tonight, not just with success on the football field, but in their other programs. And, of course, the terrific honor paid to Coach Rick Wanlin. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Bye bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio too, so you could focus. Right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Selfie. <laughs> Nailed it. <gasps> Staring contest. You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.
at the half of Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week. Host Rosemont on top 28 nothing over Kennedy. Now let's take a look at the statistics compiled by Rob Bimson. They are on the money and it is certainly one-sided, Jim. It certainly is. As you look at it, you look at the Wolverines uh, with 114 to 42 rushing. Passing yards, nothing, nothing. I don't know if he has a completion yet. Um, in passing yards and 150, of course, for Rosemont. Total offense, 271 to 42. First downs, 10 to 2. Penalties, uh, unfortunately, 6 for 65, and a couple of them were turned down. It could even be more. One for nine yards. Turnovers, one apiece. They each have a fumble early in this ball game. Now, the reason you don't see time of possession is we have a scoreboard problem, and uh, Really, and that's what's going on. Kennedy has t 17 rushing attempts and with a total of 42 yards. So you can see there, there is no run threat. Plus, there is some issues regarding timing and handoffs, as we mentioned earlier, Will. Uh, there is some issues there. Now, uh, hopefully they can put something together to get on that scoreboard because uh, certainly the line, is, the line play, as mentioned by Coach Wanlin, has been dominated by the Rosemont front, and they're getting some great get off and some hard running, particularly from uh, Lopez there in that second quarter. Let's uh, spin the replay dial and show you some of the key plays in that first half that enabled Rosemont to go up big. And this will probably be a fumble early in the football game that sets up, there it is right there, that sets up Rosemont. And there were a number of, there's a first uh, touchdown reception there, first of two for Darion Gooding. That's outstanding camera work, outstanding. And Kennedy came up with a fumble recovery, but unable to do anything with it. And they gave the ball back to Rosemont, and. Rosemont knew what to do with it. Gideon, one of his two touchdowns, 15 carries for 81 in that first half. And here's another tough runner. And uh, pay dirt there going through a couple of tacklers. And Masterson put a couple balls right on target. Here's the second of two to Gooding. And uh, the balance there again was outstanding with the run game and the passing attack. Yeah. Lauren Goodman, what you got? I'm here with Brian Lewis, the coach from Kennedy. Coach, you guys had a long talk. What was that talk about and how are you going to get back in the game? Uh, just having some heart, um, getting back in the game. I mean, a lot of guys are down, but I told them that, you know, if they put up 28 in the first half, we can get 28 in the second. So we got to do what we got to do, follow our our, um, our our play practice plan that we had all week. A lot of guys are just shaking right now, but we're going to be all right. What's the immediate bounce back for you guys to get back on that 28 start? Um, just our attitude changed. You know, a lot of negativity came when uh, things got down, but we just got to them, and guys are hyped right now, ready to get back out there and change the second half. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Will. Oh, thanks, Goody. If they're hyped, Jim, um, we'll recognize that right off, and certainly they need to be hyped. It's going to take a collective team effort, one possession at a time. Well, it is, and that first possession is, is super important, whether they're on D or whether they're on O. Uh, they've got if they're on defense, they've got to stop and force a punt. And if they're on offense, they got to get into a drive and put something on the scoreboard to give those kids some confidence. Well, let's shift a little bit here, Jim. Uh, the weekly rankings are always a subject of deep interest around the area. Here's Domino's dozen. Well, let's look at that. Folsom is still number one despite that loss to De La Salle. And, we were there seeing a, a great football game with two national powers last week. Uh, up in Oak Ridge tonight, Folsom's there playing number two Oak Ridge, and that's a huge game. Intercom three, Terry Stark's ball club going. Davis with a tough match tonight versus Rio Linda. We'll see what's coming out of that. Monterey Trail sinks a little bit with an upset loss to Kasumna's Rockland. Is hanging in there week in, week out. Del Oro, of course, right there. Pleasant Grove uh, having a great year. Uh, Tonight in center, uh, surprising a lot of people. The only team to beat Real Linda, that's why you see them rated one notch higher. Granite Bay at 11, and uh, Capital Christian 
uh, number 12 in that top dozen. And then we have in the red zone, wanting to get in that dozen, Bear River and Elk Grove visiting Davis. Uh, Oakmont having a good year. Lincoln in center hooking up tonight. Consumed as Oaks, fresh from a win over Monterey Trail. Placer back in the top 20, Yuba City and Vista Del Lago. And on the bubble, wanting to get in the red zone or higher, Roseville, Colfax, Del Campo, Sheldon, Rosemont, you're seeing tonight looking very good. Grant back in the wind column last week. Franklin and followed up with Laguna Creek. Well, a couple of scores have trickled in at, at the half. Okay, Goody, let's have it. Will, there's a lot going on around the city right now. Talked about one and two going to, against each other. Folsom at Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge actually has the lead right now, 20 to 14 over Folsom at the half. Well, how about that? There was uh, lots of opinions flowing throughout the week on how that game could shake out. It's just at the half, but Coach Cavalier and the Trojans up there at home in El Dorado Hills probably feeling pretty great about leading at the intermission in a ball game that uh, most folks thought would be, be simply another fulsome victory. As we near second half action, a couple more partials to relay to you. Um, Rockland in their matchup with Whitney, leading big, 20 nothing at the half. And uh, that's no surprise to you, Jim. You had been talking about Rockland since before the season started. They certainly have, and I've talked a little bit about Oakmont. Not a lot, but Oakmont off and running, 17-0 against a pretty good Casa Ball Club. Well, Oakmont um, emerging after a long slumber. That's good for the area. Certainly is, and uh, we've got uh, a number of people right on there. Now, I know we got another half to go in that football game up there at Oak Ridge, and, of course, we're excited. We'll be up there in about three or four weeks with Del Oro at uh, uh, really up at, uh, at the Oak Ridge. We're looking forward to that. Oh, by all means, just another slice of that tough, Sierra Foothill League that ha takes no prisoners week to week, no softies, and any victory in that conference is a well-earned win. Well, generally in that top 12, we have five, sometimes six SFL football teams, so it shows you the power there. But again, Coach Cavalier doing a great job at Oak Ridge, and uh, that ball game is far from over, and that could go right down the wire. It could and may, in fact, go right down to the wire. But I would have to think right now that as far as the Folsom fans are concerned, uh, they may be uh, falling into that twilight zone vicinity where there's some doubt creeping in there, particularly after getting smacked last week. And now against an area toughie and conference rival trailing at the half. Well, yes. And certainly, we just had a score coming in here with Cap Christian, 7-3 over Christian Brothers in the second quarter. That's kind of surprising because Brothers, after that initial loss to Pleasant Grove, didn't show us much that night. But since then, they've won three, Will. They have, and they had their biggest victory in a long time with that comeback win over Marlon Blanton's Jesuit Marauders in the Holy Bowl at Hughes. Well, they certainly did. They <laughs> What's going on with Lauren Goodman? I know you've got something for us. Well, well, you guys are right on the pulse with the scores. Had some other ones that were pretty impressive. Sheldon, 7. Consumers, Oaks, 33. Oak Grove, 27. Davis, 21. Down right now. That's a key matchup in the Delta. You also have Franklin, 7. Pleasant Grove, 20 at the half. So there's a some intense games going on. A tight one that we want to keep an eye on as well. Granite Bay 3, Del Oro 0. Oh, my word. You have just brought us four games, four scores of ultimate importance. I don't think we've had a, a week like this at midseason of the regular season with as many important games that uh, we feel should be uh, reported, you know, with partial scores and uh, occasional um, updates on those Jim well yes particularly at this stage uh, almost at midseason when you get a tight race in the SFL which hasn't happened in years 
and it could very well happen because we got a good ball game going up at Oak Ridge, and we know that uh, Rockland is good and Del Oro is good and Granite Bay is pretty good. But, uh, again, that Delta League, we said it several weeks ago, we felt the league was up for grabs. And it has proven out to be exactly that. Yeah. There's some toughies that have to tangle, and we'll continue to feed you scores as the updates uh, pile up. And right now we are ready for our second half kickoff. Rosemont booting to Kennedy. This would be the time to answer as far as the Cougars are concerned. Doing the booting, Hassan Kanta, a perfect four for four in the PAT department in the first half. Kennedy could really use a big play on special teams here with their speed guys. Well, they and do. There's one of them right there, number four, Xavier Calvin. But that kickoff is soaring out of bounds to the far side. Well, now do you do you roll the dice and ask for another kick, hoping your fast guys can get a run back, or do you open shop at the 35? Well, apparently they're deciding they want to give Grant or Calvin a chance to run back the ball. And it seems apparent that Hassan is not going to kick the ball to them. No, I, I see him either trying to get the ball to the sideline or perhaps pooch kick and maybe even onside kick. They don't want to, despite 28-0, they don't want to see Grant or Calvin take it to the house. Now, with these returners cheating up to the 25-yard line, let's see if Hassan's got the leg to put it all the way over their heads. A huge hole right in the middle. Uh, it's the squibber, the bounder, fielded clean at the 40. Trying to work for field position, he gets a couple more on the return, but nevertheless, excellent field position for the Kennedy Cougars in their first possession of the second half. And we'll see what they do with that excellent field position. Well, this first drive is so important, as we said at halftime, Will, because they need a confidence builder for the Cougars. From their own 44, they go with the forward wide receiver set again. Weltman turns and gives, straight handoff, and blasted hard. Cook got greeted. That was a couple of hard shots delivered there, led by Elijah Taon, number three. Well, I'm very impressed. Coach talked very highly of Elijah, a young junior, Tyone. Tione is outstanding linebacker, one of the leading tacklers on the team with over 35 coming into tonight's contest. Well, that was a merely a one-yard run, second and nine, as we're underway here in the third quarter. Four wide receivers set, continuing, and a whistle's going to blow this play dead. Maybe some movement along that line. A walk-off against the Cougars. Dead ball, encroachment on the offense, five-yard penalty, replay, second down. Make well, it second and 14 now, back to the 40-yard line. Well, when they break the huddle and they come up to the line, uh, they're not set for a second very often. Out of the pistol now. Turns and fires right. An above-the-head catch, but defended well and... Not much going on there. A penalty marker dropped late after the play was over. So we'll see about that. Well, Zion Gideon stole the ball on the far side. Roughing the passer on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. Wow, taken off the hook. And that's a break for Kennedy. Make the game. First and 10 for the Cougars. They are set up at the Rosemont 44. Run to the near side. Broken tackle. And then a gang tackle. 
A nice pursuit by a number of Rosemont players, but an excellent run that time. A 13-yard pickup by Man Man Garner. Number 13 picks up 13. Watch that handoff here, and he runs off tackle. Bounces it outside. Breaks a tackle. Spins, breaks another tackle. Excellent effort by Garner. Spread formation, four wides. Just a three-man rush that time, so they run wide and get away with it. The push gets him an extra yard. Man, man again. And another rushing first down for the Cougars. Well, that fumble's recovered by his own number 11 right there, Rayshon Day with the recovery on that fumble. Well, on this drive alone, they've registered more first downs than in the entire first half. And probably equal in yards. From the 17 yard line, Kennedy looking revived on offense. Let's see if they can sustain. He looks left all the way, fires into the end zone, broken up, nearly picked, thrown into the danger zone. There was two people on that receiver. Including he forced the ball. Free safety, Darion Gooding. Darion Gooding was right there. And I'll tell you, he forced the ball that time. Looked like he was trying for Malachi Grant there, but not open. So Weltman, fortunate that wasn't picked. There's a good shot of Gooding. He Gooding, an out, yeah, outstanding athlete. Weltman looks right, fires to the right corner, a lob, picked off Brodnax with the steal and shoved out of bounds by Malachi Grant with a face mask push. There it is there. Well, DeMarco Brodnax coming up hurting a little bit there, possibly on that shove out of bounds, grabbing his back but that pass had no chance. They're gonna uh, take a look at him, Will. Well, another turnover committed by Kennedy on their deepest drive. After the interception, personal foul, face mask, on the offense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Let's take another look at how this play evolved. Who was that to, and how could they hope for that to succeed? Alley oop. There's the penalty right there. So, from the 24 yard line, Rosemont back on the attack. Look who's there, leading the way, getting in all the way out to the 40 yard line. 16 on the pickup. He's gotta be near that 100 or more. He's got to be very close, I would think. Nearly a face mask grab right there. He was able to shake it off. So Wolverines up to the line with a comfortable 28-0 lead here as we're nearing midway third. Turn and give, here he comes again. Grabbed by the arm and slung down. Great defensive play that time. One of their excellent defenders, Dante Adams, with the solo job. He wasn't having any of that straight arm action. No, good job by 33, Dante Adams. No, he grabbed it and slung him down. Don't you dare straight arm me. <laughs> yep, here they are in their eye formation, Will. They lose a couple on it. Second and 12 upcoming. Masterson on the run, chased hard. He's in trouble and throws. Woo, incomplete, nearly had a circus catch out there after a wild scramble. Nice effort that time. Yeah, he but was under heavy pressure. Elijah Tayon with the try. Third and 12. Well, I look for if, if 
Coach Wanlin wants to play it safe. He runs that dive play or, or give to Lopez. As we noticed before the half, Lopez was just uh, just really ripping up five and 10 yard vertical gains. So a big third down upcoming. Kennedy hoping for a defensive play here. Play fake, throw deep, left sideline, route on target, incomplete. Broadnax, the intended receiver, solo coverage out there by Malachi Grant. And help from Xavier Calvin. Fourth and 12. You know, that was pretty close to pass interference. Yeah, yeah we thought so too. And uh, got away with that one, but this is one of the few times we're gonna see uh, Rosemont punt tonight. One of the few, Elijah Tayon to do the honors. Nice punt, good hang time, and it hit one of the downfield defenders. It was Gooding. Did he get down there fast or what? Well, yeah, he certainly did, but I don't think anybody called it with interference with the right to, to feel the ball. And apparently, they didn't see it. Evidently. So, the ball goes over. Let's take another look and keep our eyes on 44. Okay. 44 yard punt and another whistle flag fly. Well, 74 has got to set himself. Ethan Gooder. This is the eighth penalty of the game against Kennedy. Well. Game referee, the venerable Chris Gnip. That is demonstrative, isn't it? We have an unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense, number three, simulating the snap. 15 yard penalty will be a first down. Well, how about that? When was the last time you saw that? Elijah Tayon singled out, simulating yeah. the snap. Yeah. He, unsportsmanlike. Well, he they use hand clap on the snap. They, they use the hand clap, and he he's clapping from his linebacker position, and it does uh, interfere with the count. So the penalty walk-off allows Kennedy a first and 10 from the Cougar 33 in a game that continues to have uh, unusual and seldom seen plays. Yeah. Well, they're playing man up now on these double twin set here. They're playing man to man and the deep zone, uh, the safety over the top. Now they back off into the zone on the near sideline. Four wide receiver alignment, mix up in the backfield. Now it becomes a run play across the 40 to about the 42 and a fallen Cougar and showing tremendous energy after that stop for Rosemont, number 74, Junior Drew Drew, all 325 pounds and we see a hobbled Rajan Day leaving the field for Kennedy. Well, that happened just before the whistle. That's a uh, Pretty good receiver going down on the far sideline. Gain of nine, second and one from the 42 yard line. Kennedy trying to push a sustained drive into the end zone. Boy, tough way to go right there. A gallant effort turned in by man man Garner who had at least five defenders get a piece of him on that play. Well, give him a lot of credit and give Ian Marlang, number 22 credit, because he misses a tackle, but he doesn't give up. 
Watch 22. He misses Gardner. He missed the tackle right there. And watch him hustle to the play. Well, I suppose so. More impressive was the effort by Garner. Um, that took a lot of nerve. And Gain of five. It was the fifth first down this half for Kennedy after a virtually totally unproductive first half. Deep up the field. Incomplete. In between two defenders. Tough way to go. Yeah, Malaka Grant. He throws a lot of balls up, with, up for grabs with two defenders on him as we look at this. Well, Malachi surrounded on that. Front and back. Well, Darion Gooding, you see there, number five. He's had a stellar performance both offensively and in the secondary. Second and 10 from the 47. Zigzag move. Man, man, Garner, very shifty and deceptive. He's made tacklers miss about 10 times just on his last two carries. Well, I'm impressed with his effort and yards after contact. He's never giving up. Man, man, Garner, yes. Coach is giving him a few pats and he's deserving. The third quarter presses on here at Rosemont High. Nice to have you with us for Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week with Jim Domino and Lauren Goodman. I'm Will James and right now 28-0 Rosemont on top. A bullet incomplete through the hands of the intended receiver there. Quite catchable but that time Nick McDonald couldn't squeeze it. Well, Welton threw a dart there on that inside route. Well, he is a baseball player and he's a pitcher and it's been said that he throws 90 mile an hour fastballs. That was one of them. Yeah, that's, he had some velocity on that. Obviously they gotta go for it fourth and four to get to, in this game, they gotta move the chains. Movement. Well, they they, got, the stunting linebackers seem to disrupt that Kennedy offensive line. Well, there definitely was. Uh, now they, they go from fourth and four to fourth and nine. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Once again, uh, be surprised if Kennedy punts. Uh, they may gamble. That was their ninth penalty. Of course, notwithstanding the other two that were declined. Correct. Up to the line come the Cougars looking at fourth and nine. Four wide receiver set. We've seen a lot of that tonight. A bad pitch picked up on one bounce. It's going to be ruled dead ball. Cook tried to make well, the most of it. Well, of course, it was a forward. It was a forward pass. That's why it's dead. Other. <coughs> and the ball goes over on downs. They've had a handful of those tonight. And the. As you see Cook coming off the field there. So the Rosemont offensive unit piling up 28 in the first half, yet to get on the board here in the second, but not being threatened either. First and 10 Wolverines opening shop at the Kennedy 48. Turn and give. Up the middle, blast, and he gets away. Lopez, power plus, near a first down at the Kennedy 38. Well, he does run with power. He and Marlang 33 run with power. Watch, simple dive play, simple quick dive, and watch him go. He keeps his feet moving, his pad level down, picks up yards. 
First down on the carry from the Kennedy 38 now. Deception, and Lopez again breaks off a run. He's dropped at the 31-yard line, gain of seven. And Coach Wanlin felt that he's a little bit hobbled right there, but Coach Wanlin feels that uh, if they get in this situation, they can move the chains with Lopez. Tough, hard runner. Well, Masterson put on quite a fake after the handoff. I give him credit for that. But it looks like Lopez is going to walk it off. Watch him. He's a warrior. Tight formation this time. Run play shy of a first. Getting up off the bottom, getting in. He's been a workhorse tonight. It's going to bring up third and one. Looks like they're running dive left, dive right. Uh, really. And eating up the clock in the process. Wolverines up to the line, needing a yard for a first. Let's see if they try to go beyond that. Double tight end. Power backfield. A hard shot delivered. He's got first down yardage though, but that was a blast. Hard hitting Kennedy, never say die. When they line up in that power set backfield with double tight ends, they're coming right at you inside the tackles. Rosemont, first and Here. 10 from the Kennedy 27. Power eye set up. Nice burst, nice cut. Getting into the 15 yard line, maybe the 16, and move the chain city, gain of 11. Uh, have a look at this. They're running just power football at you, reverse pivot. They lead with two backs coming right at you. They've got three running backs in the game again. Look at this set. Rajon Day with the tackle for Kennedy. Turn and give, getting in, big hole, a burst. He's inside the five, dropped near the goal line. Just touch down Wolverines. Gideon from 16 for his third score of the evening. Hassan Conte on for the PAT. He's hit four out of four so far. Out of the hold of Eli Enriquez, spotted clean, booted on the way, plenty of distance, got it. 35-0, and Gideon is having quite a ball game right through that Kennedy defense. We'll be right back. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water too. That'll probably help. You were probably gonna turn down the radio too, so you could focus, right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Rosemont set to kick off with their first score here in the second half on top 35. And fielded just before stepping out of bounds without a chance to return. Everything's going Rosemont's way in tonight's football game. Bad field position. After that, well-placed bounding kickoff, difficult to field. The last scoring drive, six plays covering 48 yards. 
for the Wolverines. Kennedy opening up first and 10 from their own 18. A run play gets out to the 25 or 26. Once again, Gardner, he gets up the field. He's giving it a big effort here tonight. Gideon, 20 carries for 125 yards, three scores. Very nice complimentary run game to go with Gooding's two touchdown receptions from Masterson to account for their 35, plus the five Hassan Kanta PATs. Gain of eight, second and two. Short yardage and a fallen Wolverine. And that looks like the big man himself, Junior Drew Drew, who's been fierce tonight on defense. Maybe it's just a cramp. Third quarter, we got 250 remaining. Late third. And so far, it's been all Rosemont on an evening that is quite comfortable here for the many spectators on hand, particularly Wolverines fans. And the Rosemont marching band has been outstanding. Well, you see all the players taking a break and taking a knee as they assess this injury. Well, during this slight impasse here, as we hope that nothing serious comes of that, probably just a cramp, we have another ball game coming up next week, Coach, and it's going to be from the Delta League, and it could be Delta Doom for one of those two as the Jesuit Marauders journey out to Elk Grove, and they're going to take on the Franklin Wildcats at Cosumnes Oaks High School. What do you know? <laughs> well, we're back in the Delta. And as we said earlier this evening, the Delta with Elk Grove and Davis and Franklin and Pleasant Grove, Kasumas Oak, Sheldon, and Jesuit is up for grabs. That it is. Well, Drew Drew looks okay, walks off the cramp. We resume place, second and two, or third and two, I should say. Right side run, plenty for a first, big speed. And crossing the 40 before running out of room. And again, he has been impressive. Man, man, Garner has had the most productive plays that I can recall for Without Kennedy doubt. tonight. He's moving to change once Six, again. 16 yards on that carry. First and 10 Cougars. And there's a... Injured Wolverines, hope that's not serious. Football at the Kennedy 42. They show four wides. Weltman fires to no one in particular, intercepted easily. And running it back, Gooding, very dangerous, and he runs it all the way back to about the Kennedy 33. Up for grabs. Let's take another look at that sequence. And there you see quarterback Weltman looking, throwing off his back foot back against the grain and just sitting there at that safety spot, just sitting there waiting for it, of course, is Gooding. And that's what good safeties do, play center field. There you go. Well, that's the third turnover of the evening. A pair of pass interceptions and a fumble recovery. And they have also fired blanks and gone out on downs three times. Unsuccessful on fourth down. So it just is not Kennedy's night at this point in time. So Rosemont. Again, with another first and 10 from the Kennedy 28. 
Turn and give, right side run, big room, and string it out to the near sideline oh, yeah. at about the 15, and again, Romel Marlang. Yeah, he, that's Hacks. nice to have a backup running back like him, I'll tell you. He runs hard. He run that draw play, and up between him and Lopez, they run that draw play the way it's supposed to be run, Will. They really do. No doubt. Boy, there was some hard contact along the sideline on that play, and shaken up for Kennedy was Rajon Day. Hope he's going to be all right. Well, let me tell you, when he puts that shoulder down, Romel Marlong is tough. He runs tough, hits hard on defense, drops that shoulder. He's going to punish you. So it's another first down for the Wolverines, but we're going to suspend play for a moment here as our game officials are attending to the injured Kennedy player, and I believe it's Day, Rajon Day. And he's getting double assistance and helped to the Kennedy sideline. So he was uh, in on that hard shot. And, you know, this could be a possible concussion scenario because that was a violent collision at the end of Marlang's run. Uh, well, it certainly was. Oh, my goodness. We heard that from all the way up here in the press box and wouldn't want to be involved in that one. Quick hit. Broadnax has the flip and stays on his feet, getting inside the 10-yard line as Masterson had the quick release on that. Yeah, I, that's an excellent call by Coach Wanlin and his staff. He runs that quick screen to the near sideline, and he had a host of blockers in front of him. Well, let's see if we can pick up the injury to Rajon Day. Here's the run by Marlang, and there's going to be a major hit. And there you saw it. He rolled right past it, and that's like hitting a tank. Second and two, in close, inside the five now. Marlang making him pay. Cook in for part of that stop up from the secondary, but we got a penalty down here. Tough night for the Kennedy Cougars, to say the least. Here's the call. Another cramp. Face mask foul on the defense. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. We'll take the ball half the distance to the goal. Another penalty, I think that makes 10. Against Kennedy this evening. And uh, players cramping up and that's Logan Angeles, 55 two-way starter, defensive end, and offensive guard. And generally, they bring in 54 Peterson, who's a great defensive end, Malik Peterson, and he does a good job at guard. He can fill in anywhere along that front. First and goal from the two, as you see Angeles being worked on from the near hash mark. Incomplete on the throw by Masterson. Not sure what they were trying for there at the two-yard line, but. Well, that's, uh, I, I'd like to see that uh, again because that was a, a really quite different formation they were in. Less than a minute remaining here in the third quarter. Kennedy trying to slam the door and prevent further damage. They're down 35 zip. Well, they could give the ball to either of those fullbacks, Lopez. Watch him come out in the power eye here uh, and come right at him. They'll line up in that power eye and come right at him. From the two, turn and give. Gedeon hit, knock sideways and drop short. He's at the one. Well, once again, they're not in a hurry, and the clock running out in the third quarter here, but uh, they don't need to be in a hurry. 
So on third, they'll try to smack it in from one yard out. I'm surprised uh, this is not a Lopez special, but he might still be hurting from that earlier play. A lot Touchdown, of Wolverines! Kyle Masterson doing an excellent job of engineering the Wolverines offensive unit tonight. This touchdown coming in the final minute of the third period and again on for the PAT, Hassan Kanta. Swings through and nails another one. PAT is good, 42. And the touchdown this time carried home by the quarterback himself, Kyle Masterson. We'll be right back. Another bounding kickoff, and it's blown dead. Evidently, he had a knee down, and that's where Kennedy will start with their offense just outside their 30-yard line. And I'm asking now, are we getting in that running clock territory, Coach? Well, we certainly are here as the quarter is running out. If agreed upon by both coaches, uh, and the officials will approach them probably at the conclusion of this quarter coming up with a 42 point lead why this qualifies for that. From the Kennedy 33. That's a tough way to go. I'll tell you they have strung him out a number of times. Man Man Garner has made the most of it and he's played courageously but that's a four yard loss. Well, they were such penetration as the quarter's coming to an end here. We'll be right back for more of the Hometown Sports Game of the Week. <gasps> Staring contest! Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? Well, we're set to begin fourth quarter action and apparently is going to be a running clock unless I am mistaken from the signals from the field and from our game referee, Mr. Chris Gwinnip. So Kennedy with the pill first and 10. And they're set back to their 29 yard line. And there's a whistle to start action as we're underway here in the fourth with the running clock. Short completion over the middle and a big speed run nearly to midfield. Over the middle was open and has been open. Three players gang tackling 
the excellent Xavier Calvin. It's the first completion of the evening for the Kennedy offense and quarterback Elijah Weltman. They make the 48 yard line, gain of 19. Wheel and deal, another bullet on a slant, hit immediately after the catch for about a four to five yard gain. Good concentration to hang on to at that time. Nick McDonald with the grab and the hold. See, he doesn't need much time to throw that ball. He can get it out under two seconds, get out of his hands, and exploit the middle because it's wide open. Gain of four, second and six. Football into Rosemont territory at the Wolverine 48 yard line. Good protection this time. A long throw over the middle, picked off on the dead run. And again, another interception for Darion Gooding. And hit there from behind, holds on to the ball, still on his feet. Running back nearly to the Kennedy 40. It's Gooding's second interception to go with his two touchdown receptions. Quite a night. De deuces are wild, and that includes number two, Gideon, who's run for three scores. Well, deuces are wild, and the G's are wild. Gideon and Gooding, the G and G boys. So we've got Rosemont taking over here. First down after the fourth turnover by the Cougars. First and 10 from the Kennedy 41. Turn, fake. It's a give and a left side run and a gang tackle job. between Gideon and Gooding. And the orchestration of Kyle Masterson. That has uh, been a pretty dynamic duo. Second and five from the 36. Left side run, wide open, Gideon, one man to beat, cuts on him and dropped at the two. Nice. Never say die tackle to prevent the score issued by Zion James. First and goal. Gideon well, almost getting in for his fourth score and may indeed have it now. Well, that's quite a run. Bounces it to the outside. Look at this, shows some speed there. Nice move. From the three yard line, banging on the door again, off tackle left, touchdown, cashed in Rommel Marling from three yards out. And the score keeps climbing without it being necessary to actually try to run it up. This is Situational scoring and on for another PAT, try Hassan Kanta. 48 zip, trying to tack on one more. Whistles blow this play dead. Seven and a half minutes, clock rolling. Let's see about the penalty. Dead ball, false start on the kicking team. Five yard penalty, replay the down. Gideon with a great night, 163 yards. What a night for getting, and of course, Gooding with two interceptions and many receptions. The G and G boys having their big night for the Rosemont Wolverines. Uh, penalty number 11 on Kennedy. Spot, boot, and got it. With seven and a half to go in this ball game, 
49 zip. Let's check in with Lauren Goodman. I know you have an update for us. Yeah, guys, on a couple of plays ago, you saw number 11 for Kennedy, Rajon Day, come out of the game. And I think he's under concussion protocol right now. He came out of his pads. pads. They actually checked their helmets. Kennedy and Rosemont tonight have a special custom helmet that actually lets you know when you have a concussion or a miss hit. It blows up inside the helmet. So they are have him on the watch, and he's out of the game for the rest of the Will. Well, thanks for the update, Goody. Uh, looks like it might be getting a little cooler out there with that coat you're wearing, huh? <laughs> Three plays, 41 yards on the most recent scoring drive for the Wolverines as the running clock should just about run things out. A bounding kickoff and out of bounds, penalty. I can only think of perhaps one penalty against Rosemont that was not an out-of-bounds kickoff. They played a clean football game, and as far as that... Uh, Illegal procedure on the kicking team, five-yard penalty, re-kick. As far as the uh, mistakes, penalties, and turnovers, they gave up one fumble, a couple of penalties. Very sharp game tonight. For Rosemont, yeah, at the half, they only had a minus nine in penalties, minus nine yards, and uh, pretty clean uh, on their part, and certainly uh, a tough, a long night for the Kennedy Cougars. Another bounder in the same vicinity, out of bounds again. Well, I think this time the Kennedys no, they still want them to kick again, I guess. I guess so. So back-to-back -back penalties on out-of-bounds kickoffs. The only blemish is really for Illegal Hassan Conta. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. Well, meanwhile, all during this period of time, the clock keeps ticking away. So we have two minutes of running clock during these kickoffs again. Well, they've had four penalties this evening, and three of them are on kickoffs that go out of bounds. Three out of four. I'd say it's a pretty clean game on the part of the Wolverines. No doubt. So try it again, and he's going to blast away to the near side, though, and three consecutive out-of-bounds kickoffs and four of their five penalties. I don't know what the record is, but he's going to have the longest time lapse during these kickoffs. Well, I'll tell you, um, it is eating up the time, as you said. And we had mentioned the courageous play of Kennedy's man, man, Garner. 13 carries for 66 yards. Okay, let's try it again. Line drive to the left sideline, fielded by Cook. He's gonna come back from his 25. A little shiver there to get outside. And he dives across the 45 and a penalty marker down. Well, Cook was <laughs> brave on that and Another penalty walk off, Jim. And some little bit of uh, exchanging chatter from the near sideline. The walk off is against the Kennedy Cougars. It's a big one. And there you see Kennedy head coach, Brian Lewis. 
enduring a tough night for his ball club. So first and 10 from the Kennedy 20, they run wide. That's and a nice tackle on Gardner. He got tagged hard on that too. Marco Brodnack's in that secondary with a nice low tackle on Garner. That's probably the only way you're bringing him down. He runs hard, you know. Well, they moved the chains. It's a first down. Football at the 28-yard line. <laughs> Four wide receivers set. The draw play is not going to get it done. Cook with the carry had something to say to one of our game officials. Excellent scat back who's still somewhat hobbled. of one, second and nine. There's a jubilant Rosemont sideline area there. Loose football, fallen on for a loss. Third and long. Got about six minutes to go in this one with a running clock. And Kennedy trying to get into the end zone at least once and get on the board down 49-0. Unable to do a reversal of the first half. Well, they were in it for in the third quarter uh, with it for about five or 10 minutes and then they lost it. Over the middle and complete. Wide open number three standing in that curl zone about eight, 10 yards deep. Something, he's been rushed so much tonight that Weltman is throwing off his back foot and, and you know, acting rushed when he, at times not. He's been under heavy duress most of the night. Fourth and 14 upcoming for Kennedy, deep in their territory. Football parked at their 40, 24 yard line, I should say. Over his head, but he's up to get it and a high punt, but short. And nice emergency job as it's gonna take a 10 to 15 yard roll down at the Rosemont 30. Forty six yards on the punt. Nice job of getting out of trouble there. Well, as you as we get to the final three minutes and change here, I think you're gonna see the Rosemont uh, offense now starting to run straight ahead on dives and or soon soon taking a knee. Uh, Coach Wanless uh, certainly uh, doesn't want to run up the score any further, and so I think they'll keep it very basic in there. Here's Mar Lang, the the the, uh, the fullback smasher in at fullback here. They do keep it on the ground. They smack it, they gain out to about the 32 or 33. Pick up a four. Well, 15 is getting his chance to see a little action at running back, which is good for the Rosemont. Uh, Damon Laws getting his chance to run behind Marlang, which is good. Well, Rick Wanlin going to his bench and getting some players some playing time down the stretch here. Gain of three, second and seven. Using the whole clock, look at him hold up there. Oh, 
Turn and give. Still lots of hard hitting going on out there. Once again, the young rifter 15, uh, Damon Laws, senior getting his chance to run the football. Third and one from the 39. Oh my goodness. Well, interesting scores from around the area. I know Lauren Goodman's keeping an eye on that big one up the hill. Turn and give. That's plenty for a first down and a whole lot more. What a burst right there. And compliments of Mr. Laws. First and 10. Gain of 15 on the play. Clock continuing to roll. Right now, looking at less than a minute to play in this one. Here you see oh, <clears throat> Rosemont staying in that huddle as long as they can. This is liable to be the final play of the ball game. Ely Enriquez getting her call at quarterback. There it is there. Ely, Ellie, Ellie Enriquez. A fine young lady, one of the best quarterbacks in the area. Well, the clock not visible, but the time reaching zero. This one is in the book, and it turns out to be a 49 to nothing route administered by the Wolverines stopping Kennedy on an evening that was just not going to happen for the visiting Cougars. But good sportsmanship shown on the field and uh, certainly an example of the best parts of student athletic sports. Don't wander off. When we come back, you'll enjoy our post-game segment here. Lauren Goodman will be visiting with our players of the game and the winning coach upon our return. Stay with us. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hi, I'm Lourdes Stefan, host of Univision's Sal y Pimienta. Cancer doesn't just change the way you feel, it changes the way you look. From losing your hair, even your eyebrows, to changes in your skin and nails, cancer treatment can rob you of your confidence and self-esteem. But look good, feel better changes all that. More than 800,000 women have learned how to address the appearance side effects of cancer treatment through our workshops. Visit lookgoodfeelbetter.org to find a free workshop near you. Let Look Good Feel Better help you feel like you again. They'll test you, try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm, just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. The verdict is in and the decision is final this evening at Rosemont High School where tonight on Access Sacramento's hometown sports game of the week, it was all Rosemont, the Wolverines 
scoring early, often, and plenty on the scoreboard to emerge with a 49 to nothing victory over the visiting Kennedy Cougars. A ball game that demonstrated clearly Coach Rick Wanlin's program, the quality of it, the execution of his team, Jim Domino, and the many weapons they have on offense and their stoppers on defense. Well, you've said it all, Will. They do. Their front line is outstanding, as you see the teams gathering there. And they did win up front. We gave a lot of credit to their backs and their receivers. But I'll tell you what, that front line can play with anybody. No doubt. And I think uh, impressions that had been formed uh, will continue to be uh, commented on as far as the strength of any given team around the area. But the fact is... Rosemont's 5-0, and oh, and uh, tonight was certainly an impressive win. Well, our players of the game have been selected. There you see them for Kennedy this evening. A tough night for the Cougars, but Man Man Garner played tough football tonight, running for better than 65 yards, despite the tough D applied by the Rosemont Wolverine defense and the tandem of Zion Gideon and Darion Gooding. Gideon with three rushing touchdowns and 163 yards. Gooding with a pair of TD receptions and a pair of interceptions had exemplary performances. Our Lauren Goodman is standing by with tonight's players of the game. Goody? Well, guys, you gave me a full crowd down here tonight, um, but I got some good guys with me. First, for Kennedy, man, man, you came out, you had a big game. What helped you get going in the second half? I mean, the second half, I just had to like, keep my uh, composure and like go hard for my team because like, we came out here and we prepared all week, and I just like came out here to do what I had to do and like run hard. As a senior, you stay really focused and you continue to work hard. What helped you do that throughout the game? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, you picked it up really running hard. Yeah. What allowed you to run harder in the second half? Necessarily not run harder, but what allowed you to see gaps and different things were out on the field? Uh, so I just like went in there and like my line helped me out a lot. So like when I saw the hole, I just had to take it. As a senior, what do you want to take away from this game that's going to help you guys get better and build on tonight? Uh, we got to like get more. Uh, we got to like run harder, and our line has to block, and we just got to like come together as a, a team, and like yeah, we just got to come together as a team, like play together. So. Thank you so much for tonight, and continue your luck on the rest of the season. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Now I'm here with the full crew. It seems like the GGG right now going on, Will, down here on the field. Um, I got two stars, one senior, one sophomore. You guys came out and played really hard tonight. What allowed you guys to get going both collectively on offense and defense? To never be satisfied and remain humble. Same thing, become satisfied and stay humble. Now for you, you played extremely well. You had two touchdowns on the offensive end and two, t two interceptions on the defensive end. What allowed you to get the de uh, defensive stops? To make sure no one goes deep and make sure my team get the ball back. Now as a senior leader, you came out, you had a lot of energy tonight. What are some goals for you in this program this year? To carry my team to being league champs. Now, we know you guys pretty much played a balanced attack. As a senior and a sophomore, what type of things have you taught him and what things have you learned from him? He's, he's taught me to never get beat deep and to forget about the last play if I made any mistakes. To play hard, and what I learned from him is to run hard down the field and don't juke back or go backwards. Hey, well, Goody, I've got a question or two for you. Well, we got a question coming from the booth right now. Yeah, for Mr. Gideon, your line blocking tonight was dynamite. Um, in the huddle on each called play where you did have success, was there any additional chatter among your offensive line, or did they just go about their business? Well, we're talking about your offensive line tonight. They came in big and helped you out. And as Will stated just now, what was the chatter like going on in the huddle when you guys were coming through as your line was making some, some big plays for you? Every play, we were just ready to execute over and over and over. And Goody for Mr. Gooding, on his two touchdown receptions, what kind of coverage was he working against on, the, on those catches? 
Now, on your two touchdown receptions, what type of coverage were you getting out there, and what did you see open? Uh, we was, I was getting covered once, so that was pressing me, so I saw the deep um, fade open. So that's why I did the fade. Awesome. A lot of talent down here on the field. Thank you guys, and congratulations again for being the players of the game. Now I'm going to have Coach Wallen step in. Coach, you guys, you have tremendous talent right here in these two guys. Absolutely. What helped them get going tonight? Uh, what, honestly, their defense tried to take away certain things. And so anytime you know defense lined up, try to bracket one of our better receivers, so that opens up our young guy who they, you know, they put, they didn't bracket him, so we exposed him there. So then when he started hitting it, you know, Zion, they, they kind of pushed the free safety over to bracket him too. And then our line, you know, opened up the holes for Zion and he took it over. Coach, now I know with a big scoring like tonight, we want to talk about the offense, but can you talk to me a little about the defense and what you saw special in them? Oh, the defense is just a lot of tenacity. You know, we play team D, we play responsible defense. So a lot of times, you know, we don't just come rushing up the field. Every kid has a part in our defense, and it's about just not breaking down, staying with responsibility football, pursuit to the ball, gang tackle, and just – you know, I was kind of proud of it coming out in the second half, having that lead. I, I was worried about losing a little bit of focus. But, you know, they got a couple of first downs, and then we buckled down and then finished the game real strong. Coach, well, it seems like you got the Wolverines rolling right now. 4-0 and start. What are some goals? 5-0. and What is some goals for you, and how are you guys going to build on tonight and build on pretty much the start of the season to finish out strong? Yeah, absolutely. We have bye next week. And I just told the kids, I said, you know, the buy is you really have to focus on practice because it can, it's very easy to take a week off. And we just need to make next week so important to move forward. And then every week it's just another challenge. And it's just as long as you put it to these kids, these kids have, have, have conquered every challenge you put in front of them. So just keep challenging them week to week and see what happens. And Goody? Yes, Will. Another congrats to Coach Wanlin on his tremendous honor as a model coach. Absolutely, Coach. We wanted to give you a congratulations from the Access Sacramento crew oh, on you. being one of the model coaches this year in yeah, the CIF that section. Was, that was nice. That was, uh, was a big honor for me this year. Thank you so much. Will, back to you. Thanks, Goody. Uh, some outstanding student athletes, a senior, a sophomore, and a veteran coach, and a hard-playing unit all the way around results in a 49-zip triumph jim very definitely they put it all together i'm glad they finally gave credit to that front with scott and angeles guerrero McEwen, and peterson because they opened up huge holes and made it easy for lopez gideon and marlang and company i mean what a night 415 yards passing and rushing they did it all i mean really that's a balanced attack and you know what they're five and oh and to me they look uh they're very deserving of that record. And like Coach says, one at a time. So we've got some uh, scores in here if you want to share them. Well, of course, I love to share, and especially since our ace statistician, Mr. Rob Bimson, has compiled great numbers for us. It looks like the uh, Sierra Foothill League is active. Rockland, who you have spoke of early on this season, pounding Whitney up 20 after three quarters 27 to 7 and look at this final with elk grove and davis the thundering herd thunders for a 42 35 win over the blue devils in a tight one and late in the third quarter del oro's defense may be as impressive as their offense leading granite bay 21 to 3 after three and what do you have there coach well this just came in right straight uh, from our stat man rob bimson Kasumnas 53, Sheldon 14, and that's a final. Kasumnas Oaks is for real in the Delta. Well, coming off a spectacular last-second victory a week ago over previously unbeaten juggernaut Monterey Trail, now it looks like this 53-14 uh, demolition of the Sheldon Huskies has put them without doubt as a serious contender and a tough-ranked team that other opponents will have to deal with. And also from the Delta League, at the half, Pleasant Grove leading Franklin 20 to seven. So Coach Costa and the Eagles flying high. And up there at Oak Ridge, it's not over, but at the end of the quarter there, it's 33-28. Oak Ridge over Folsom. 
So it's still a quarter to go in anybody's ball game. But we had some interesting score. This scoreboard tonight is phenomenal. We had great games going on all over the city, all over the county. It was indeed. And though not the same type of tension here with Rosemont's big win over visiting Kennedy, certainly at midseason, uh, the tough leagues are, have, have tough games with multiple contenders. And that's just a sampling of what we can look for in weeks to come. Well, let's take a look at the final stats in today's ball game compiled by Mr. Rob Bimson. And as expected, they are rather one-sided. They are. Rob does a great job with this. 258 to 117 of rushing yards, passing 157, holding the opponent's Kennedy 23 passing yards. Total offense, 415 to 140. First downs, 19 to 10. Penalties, as you see, many. Turnovers, 4-1. And time of possession, kind of unable tonight because of scoreboard problems. It's quite one-sided, both on the scoreboard and in the statistics. Well, that's quite a set of stats. I know Coach Rick Wanlin will be happy to share those. Next week, we got another one coming at you on Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week. There it is, Delta Doom. We just spoke of that powerhouse league. And it will be the Jesuit Marauders traveling to Elk Grove to face the Franklin Wildcats at Cosumnes Oaks High School. You don't want to miss that one. So for Jim Domino, the irrepressible Lauren Goodman, our game director Nick Dunn, and our ace statistician Rob Bimson, I'm Will James. We thank you for joining us. And as always, we'll look forward to the next occasion when we can cross your path. So long, everyone. This program from Access Sacramento's Hometown Sports Game of the Week is available for purchase on DVD. For more information, call Access Sacramento, 916-456-8600, extension 0. This has been a Hometown Sports Game of the Week broadcast from Access Sacramento. Major underwriting support this season for Hometown Sports Game of the Week on Access Sacramento is provided by the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. Access Sacramento also thanks Sharif Jewelers, fine jewelers since 1932. Sharif Jewelers, a longtime sponsor of community television. And Folsom Lake Honda, a proud sponsor of Access Sacramento's Hometown TV and Game of the Week and a partner in our community, Folsom Lake Honda.